What's up guys? Dave here. We're going to take a ride in the Cadillac ATS-V and uh, doing a little two camera setup for the first time and I'm just going to talk about this car a little bit while we drive around. i uh, got to head down to the airport post office, my favorite place to go because it's open late and it's, uh, you know, it helps you get packages out the door sooner for our customers good thing about this car it's got uh, you know the garage door remote up here so you can program it however you like let's see how this camera looks coming out the front looks pretty cool so yeah we've had this car for a little while now just a few weeks and to, the easiest thing to tell you is it is a fantastic freaking car. I know it wasn't a very hot seller for uh, for Cadillac, so I've heard, which is ridiculous. But it's probably because when it was new, it was very expensive. Um, you know, this particular car that I have, uh, you know, new MSRP was around sixty thousand. Just with no, no, uh, none of the add-ons that came on it. This thing is got quite a bit of fun stuff installed, you know, from the factory with uh, a full carbon fiber package. Um, awesome Recaro seats. Uh, some other suede trim and things, you know. It's just crammed full of awesome stuff. And I looked at the original invoice of this car and it was almost $20,000 of add-ons was on this car, which is also probably why it did not sell for several months from the original dealership, Capital Cadillac in Smyrna, Georgia. Yeah, this, this is a, a 16 model, but it did not sell until later in 2017. And that's probably because it had so much stuff crammed on it that anyone who wanted to buy it would say, nah, no thanks, man. I'm not trying to pay $80,000 for an American four-door sedan. I don't care how fast it is, which it is. My goodness, it freaking flies. Sun's in my face. Uh, it flies like the wind and it's uh, you know a turbo v6 twin turbo v6 that is and holy crap I've had some fast cars and this thing is just ridiculous a lot of touchscreen stuff uh, you know to work the air conditioning system and navigation and all that is all done through touchscreen you know, I'll do a video on things I don't like about this car because there are a few little things, little nitpicky things that, yeah, they, they just weren't engineered well or, you know, the technology wasn't done properly. Just little nitpicky things. But otherwise, man, to drive it, I mean, crazy. You'll, you'll get in trouble in this thing. However, it is it is a very safe, fast car, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, I've had other cars, like I had the you know the the Camaro ZL1, which is the uh, 6.2 liter V8 supercharged, and just ridiculous. It was around 600 horsepower. Honestly, in a very unsafe car because the, the technology could not handle it. Uh, you know, its traction control couldn't handle it. You had to have almost race-worthy tires on it to, to keep it glued to the to the uh, pavement. Where this one, it's a lighter car than the Camaro, and it's also only 500 horsepower, give or take a few, but it just does better. You know, even though this car is only a few years newer, when you hit it, let's do it real quick here. When you hit it, it feels as planted as anything you could imagine. You know, it does it doesn't feel unsafe. Let me fix this little guy here. It doesn't feel like uh, like it's about to get out of control or anything. It feels just good, you know? 
Uh, it's an eight-speed automatic with with also optional pad paddle shifters, so you can downshift, upshift, however you like, if you want to. I do notice, you know, with these eight-speed transmissions, they, they shift gears a little too early for my liking. They don't allow it to rev up much, you know, which on a turbocharged car, they, they need to rev. You know, it needs to get hot. It needs to allow the combustion to really heat up. Otherwise, you'll get, you know, intake valve buildup and, you know, turbo buildup, you know, as far as uh, the cleanliness of the components. So I find myself going into, uh, you just bump the, uh, the, the shifter over and then you can paddle shift however you want. I find myself manually shifting more because I like to have it, you know, I like to have the revs just so. Not only for performance sake, but for, you know, for the cleanliness of the combustion chamber. And it's fun to manually shift also. I, I'm not into the stick shift thing anymore. You know, I used to I used to enjoy that. But clutch and stick shift, it's overrated, man. You know, it's just too much hassle, especially if you're having to drive in a little bit of traffic and that sort of thing. It's just like, ugh, no thanks. So I'm, I'm over the stick shift. Paddle shift, though, is freaking awesome. Uh, what else? Yeah, it's got, uh, you know, it's got all the standard stuff. Um satellite radio, HD, you know, FM radio, full navigation system. Uh, it'll even talk to you and tell you where the nearest gas station is when the uh, low fuel light comes on. I found that really cool because uh, I kind of went backwards for a few years. You know, I was like paying way too much in, in car payments and insurance and things. So I said, I'm over this. I'm over all these fancy new cars that just cost way too much. So I went backwards for a few years. Went to some older models, you know, which was nice and all, but you get, you know, you kind of miss some of the common conveniences of, of the modern cars. So I went back. Now, now I'm back with something a little bit newer, but still not all that expensive. You know, this car was expensive when it was brand new, but now that it's a few years old, it wasn't so bad. I've had, I've seen worse, you know, as far as the price of a car. Uh, something else cool, you know, when you downshift on it, it'll blip the throttle for you. So if you're actually driving a high performance application or a track, track car or something like that, it'll act like you're plopping the throttle every time you downshift to keep it nice and even. Uh, so it doesn't bounce at all, you know, coming into corners or anything like that. Braking system is fantastic in this thing. Easily one of the better cars I've ever had as far as just how it brakes, you know, because it's got very large rotors, uh, but really smooth braking. You know, I mean, like you just feel it. And, it, and it's got very even distributed braking also because the front and rear discs shed the same amount of brake dust which is not that much, but it does shed about equally as far as brake dust front and rear. So that means it's very even, you know, really cool. Uh, it's got, uh, you know, sport modes and track modes as far as, uh, as far as it's gear shifting and suspension settings. It's got that fully magnetic suspension setup, which was also on the Camaro we had. And it's simply fantastic. Whatever. It's got uh, like automatic headlights if you want to use them. It's got automatic windshield wipers if you want to use them. You can turn them off if you don't want them. But kind of neat, you know, or if you have them on mist, if you have the windshield wipers just on the mist setting and it feels a little more rain come on the windshield, the wipers will go a little bit quicker. So I was like, wow, I didn't even know it had that. <laughs> yeah, it's like totally awesome. Uh, you know, it's got a, doesn't have a large sunroof. But it's not bad. Let's hit it. <laughs> like it revs like a Formula One car. It's it a little loud when the sunroof is open. Uh, let's 
the uh, red line is just under 7,000 RPMs. Totally sick, you know, it's just a sick car. Uh, it downshifts automatically when you come to a stop, even if you're in manual shift mode, it will go back to first gear on its own, which is it's cool. What else does it have? Uh, it's got you know memory settings for the seats for two drivers. The uh, when you put it in reverse, the side mirrors if you select that option, the side mirrors will tilt downward so you can see the curb underneath you. Kind of neat. Uh, I don't really use it, but it can do that. It's got the sun right in my face. I'm still learning about everything in this thing, you know? Uh, gets good gas mileage. It averages around 20 miles per gallon, even if you drive it, you know, kind of spiritedly. Uh, but on the highway, you know, it gets really good gas mileage. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of hard to resist stepping on it because it's fun. You know, it's, it's, got, a, it's got really good performance. So you just want to have some fun in it. As soon as this light will turn green, I'll give it some. Uh, you know, I disabled the... Here we go. Second gear. Third gear. Fourth gear. That's 60 miles an hour already. Uh, that's, that's only about half to three-quarter throttle. So, you know, it's like it's totally sick. 0 to 60 in about 3.7-ish seconds is what I've read. Top speed, 190 miles per hour. It's, it's ridiculous. You know, totally ridiculous. Downshift, got right to the sun. That's, yeah, that's, that's half throttle. Turbo 6 before. I'm usually a V8 kind of owner, you know, I love the V8 sound and the V8 feel and all that, but this thing is, is very torquey. Uh, you don't have to give it much gas at all, you know, to get it get it moving. Uh, you know, it has a different sound. It's, it's, not, it's not the throaty V8 sound, but it still has a good racy sound, which is kind of cool. So I really like it. Uh, insurance wasn't too bad on it. No, I'm, you know, I have no points on my record. I don't drive like a fool. You know, I used to do that as a younger adult, but I don't mess around with getting tickets and stuff anymore. <laughs> um, insurance for me, I think, is around uh, $110 a month. That's for only one car on it, you know, because I sold my other cars, so I don't have multiple, I don't have the multiple car discount. Uh, seats are really comfortable. Uh-oh. Someone is running out of gas in their Mustang. <laughs> seats are really comfortable. It's got uh, you know all these settings on the seat you know for lumbar support and you can you know change the settings and everything as far as how it fits you, you know, even on the side bolsters up and up and below fully adjustable so that is quite nifty yeah the Recaro seat package alone was like five grand I think it's like fifty eight hundred dollars just for the seats in this stupid thing. I would have never paid that stuff, you know, if I'd bought this car new. No way. They'd have had to practically give me this car at their cost. But we didn't have to pay all that. And in fact, their price was quite low versus average retail for probably the same reason. Because even with all the options on it, you know, no one's going to pay full retail price for, for anything, for that matter. Especially an American four-door sedan. Nice corner right here. 
thing just grips so well. It's got uh, your Michelin Pilot Sport. It's got a special Pilot Sport on. Hit it. Yeah, if you, if you do any Googling on the Cadillac ATS-V, or CTS-V for that matter, the CTS-V has the V8, you know, 6.2, ridiculously powerful. Uh, those are quite valuable now. This one is fairly valuable. It also will, it'll buzz my seat if I, if I start gaining on a car too quickly, and if I haven't touched my brake pedal yet, it'll let me know that I'm getting close to another car. So, you know, for some things you might think it's overkill and all that, but, you know, if you get distracted uh, doing a video or something, get a little distracted as far as um, driving, you know, I don't use, I don't operate a cell phone or anything, I don't talk on the cell phone, I don't text while driving, I don't even have cell coverage. Um, this does have full Wi-Fi in the car. If I had cell phone coverage, it could distribute Wi-Fi throughout the car. Also a pretty neat feature, but I don't have a use for it. But yeah, it has some pretty nifty, you know, it has the typical side mirror, little alert lights. If, if there's a car in your blind spot over here, it'll let you know. And when you're backing up also, it'll let you know if, if a pedestrian is walking behind you or if a car is pulling beside you and you can't really see it. It'll buzz your seat to inform you that you're about to hit something. So that, you know, you, you can say what you want about it, but it is pretty cool to have it. Especially if you've never had a car with those features other than the typical rear bumper alert system. It's just a ridiculously fun car to drive. about to hip hop on I-75 South heading down towards downtown Atlanta. And uh, this time in the evening where we got seven, it's about 10 after seven. So traffic shouldn't be too much of a, of a problem this time of night. And it's fun to get out on the highway and just drive some. You know, especially if you're constantly working, uh, you know, on your computer or in the shop or whatever, and you don't get out very much, it's good to get out some. Let's see your little microphone here. Ooh, it's on the horn. truck up there is laying on his horn at people for some reason. Yeah, the only problem is you can't you can't lay on it, you know, when you really want to get on the throttle, you just you just can't, you know? I mean, cuz this thing will be at 120 miles an hour in no time. still cruise along at 80 or whatever. It also has little uh, turn signal indicators on the side mirrors, little bitty things. And that's pretty cool. So sort of next to you can see, you know, if they're in your blind spot and you're trying to pull, you know, uh, move over a lane, they can see it also, which is kind of cool. With the exhaust, I have the exhaust resonance fuse removed, so it always has a little bit of a throaty sound because it gets too quiet otherwise. A little too quiet, in my personal opinion. I mean, I don't like the I don't like a car to have an obnoxious exhaust sound, but a little bit of noise is good. Approaching the 
traffic as well. Very cool. So you don't have to use your cell phone, you know, your cell phone map. You don't have to use that for anything.
stereos I've heard. significant chip tuning so I haven't done that as of yet I, I kind of doubt I will because this thing needs no help whatsoever <laughs> the completely sparkling blue sky in Atlanta not a cloud in the sky we are about to get ready to get back to the motocross track that's coming soon, hopefully this weekend, actually. May get up there this weekend. I'm one of those fair weather riders now, as far as motorcycles and dirt bikes. Loud truck in front of us.
but yeah, most likely. Uh, yeah, uh, probably, yeah, we'll get back to the, the last track, or one of the last, not the last, but one of the last tracks I rode this year, or this summer, you know, the early part of the summer, one of my favorite tracks to go, and I had a pretty good endo accident on it. You know, I don't ride very hard. I don't, I don't push my limits. I ain't trying to ride like that anymore. But it wasn't due to rider error, actually. It was, it was a mechanical, it wasn't really a mechanical error of the bike, but it was mechanically induced by track conditions. It's totally weird how it happened. Close this thing here. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, I've I've only had a few good crashes in my life of riding, but this one was a good one, and I totally endowed going over a, a third gear double. Uh, landed on my head actually, and if it hadn't been for my uh, Liat neck brace, I would have probably been severely injured because I landed square on the top of my head. And you know, if you land from that high up on your head, you're probably going to break your neck or something. And that didn't happen to me at all. In fact, it cracked part of the neck brace. I haven't really talked about it much because I wanted to go back to the track where it occurred and show you everything of how it happened. And it was one of the more bizarre crashes of my life. And I totally did not get injured, thank goodness. But it totally sold me on the uh, Liat neck brace. I highly recommend them if you've never used one. Some people think they're too restrictive. I think it's completely worth it. Because I would have gotten, I would have gotten hurt big time if I had not had mine on. And you get used to them, you know. They're not. It's not like it's keeping you from moving that much. It'll keep you from moving, you know, a little bit in some areas, but it doesn't restrict you as much as you would think. And you, you get used to it. So I recommend them if you've never had one. A little bit of traffic here coming into the downtown connector, which is where two major highways come together, I-85, I-75, they meet here right on the, uh, the north side of Midtown Atlanta. That's what we are approaching right now, which is why you see this traffic here. Lots of construction now in the Midtown area. In fact, all I used to live in Midtown, gosh, 25 years ago. And uh, aside from a few of the really tall skyscrapers, it was, it was not like this 25 years ago. So a lot of people have moved into the Midtown, downtown area and construction, you know, for resident residences and high rise apartments and condos and all that has gone crazy over the past 10 to 15 years. But yeah, I don't think I would want to live down here now. It's just, it's gotten too busy. What else does this car have? It also has an automatic down as well as automatic up windows. Kind of cool. Oh look, there's a postal truck right next to me there. He's probably heading down to the uh, main Atlanta post office that I'm heading to as we speak. Because it used to be up until midnight, but now it's open until 10 p.m., which is great to be able to get packages down there late. Get them out the door quickly, please the customer, you know. Because this is the one of the busier times of the year as far as the power sport industry, motorcycle, ATV, dirt bike industry of tools and parts and things. This, you know, September is one of the busiest times of the year for that, that kind of stuff. So we try to get our stuff out as quick as we can. And sometimes we get backlogged so much that it's difficult to get a package out within two business days. It's just so busy. Who is that? Some dude on a CBR 1000. Looks like he went by us there. A newbie wearing his his pajama pants or his, his Air Jordan <laughs> track pants. Yeah. Uh, 17th Street 
Street Bridge we're going under here, which is fairly new. It didn't used to be here. I think it's been maybe 10 years since they built it. Look at that little M3 going by us with his cocked out wheels. Uh, notice the new Carvana thing on the right there. If you've noticed, you know, Carvana now has vending machines for their cars. If you can see that over to the right. So that's pretty hilarious. You can order a car on Carvana and you can come pick it up from this vending machine that's got like 10 cars stacked up on it. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> Carvana is becoming pretty popular, actually. I mean, you know, a lot of people who don't like dealing with going to a dealership to buy a car, I totally get it because it's so time-consuming, takes forever, and you don't want to be hassled, you know. You don't want to be haggling with a salesman and all that, where Carvana, their prices may not be all that great, but you don't have to hassle and haggle and hear a bunch of BS, you know, from the F&I guy or the salesman and all that. No, you just order the car you want. They'll even deliver it to your front door whole process takes less than 30 minutes you know as far as the delivery of the car I saw a neighbor of mine have that done I said I'll be dang look at that it was a couple of years ago when Carvana was a relatively new thing so yeah it's pretty typical even though it's seven Almost 7.30, we've got a little bit of traffic going through downtown Atlanta here. So it's fairly typical, let's see if we can tilt this mirror a little bit, or window, to camera. It's my, uh, my, I've got two Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Pluses now for, for filming use. Because I, the, uh, the picture is really good quality, the audio is good quality, even though I'm using a wired mic for, for right now. Trying to up our game a little bit on shooting videos and things. Uh, now you may have noticed that we haven't done any motocross videos as of late on our on our either of our YouTube channels. Uh, we were sitting on two copyright strikes on both channels for quite a while. You can thank good old NBC for those. So really gotten kind of over it and frustrated with them, you know, how how they will throw a copyright strike at you. They won't even give you a warning or anything. So it's like, whatever, man. It's not worth the risk to do that stuff. Even though we, we probably will, you know, now that we're in limbo between motocross season and supercross season we're kind of in that limbo area and are they even going to do uh, the monster cup this year i haven't even looked into it it's usually around october but right now there's no there's no racing going on as far as the united states i mean there's some overseas in europe and australia and all that but none in the u.s so we may do some more race videos soon Northside Drive. No, we're not Northside yet. That's 10th Street. Or that's actually the Georgia Tech. Yeah, that's the Georgia Tech area. So we're right around 10th Street there. And uh, approaching North Avenue, which is right around Georgia Tech. And the Varsity, if you see this big V, this big neon V ahead of us on the left there, the Varsity is place it's it's a restaurant you know it's one of the first drive-in restaurants that's been around since 1928 and it's still got drive-in where you can drive in and be served by a car hop or you can go in and, and sit down and eat but it's very uh you know it's it's nothing fancy it's just chili dogs hamburgers basic sandwiches but it's got some of the best onion rings in anywhere because they're freshly made Vidalia onions made in onion rings and they're totally awesome uh, you know 
frosted orange, chocolate milk. I'm gonna watch these people around us here. Yeah, if you ever come into Atlanta, go to the Varsity. It's 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 nothing fancy, but if you're if you're looking for something just yummy and cheap, it's got it. Like, see, we're, we're in traffic right here going around, you know, 15, 20 miles per hour. I just keep the car in, in third gear in manual shift mode. That way it's not constantly shifting gears back and forth and all that. It gets very annoying. Uh, you know, when these 8-speed, 10-speed automatics are constantly shifting gears, I think it's annoying. And I think it's, I personally think it's too much wear and tear on the transmission. Shifting back and forth and all that. No thanks. It's almost dark now. Sun is going down early and coming up late in the morning. You notice, boy, it's like 7 a.m. before the sun comes up now. The uh, one of the harvest moon moons has been out lately, and it's been extremely bright overnight. So you'll think you're like running late for work or something going, wow, is the sun already up? No, the moon is what's so bright. So it gets a little annoying. Who is that? You'll, you'll see people racing down through here. Totally ridiculous, you know, you guys in their freaking chargers and challengers and stuff racing through the downtown connector. And it's got a little curvy wave to it, you know? It's, it's This is a pretty sharp curve area. Little do they know that we would stomp them like no bit nobody's business if we wanted to. But yeah, there's too much traffic around here. I ain't trying to weave through a bunch of traffic. But yeah, there'll be sometimes you come down through here and guys are going 120. I don't know why, why they're racing people, you know, through this section of highway. I have no idea. Especially when Georgia State Patrol loves to camp out around here and look for those dudes. But it would definitely be fun to take this car, you know, to a road course, you know, like to a track like Barber Motorsports Park or Road Atlanta, you know, they have uh, Atlanta Motorsports Park in northern Georgia. Quite a few places that they have public track day, you know, so you can really cut loose on your car safely. That'd be fun, you know. Might consider doing that one day. Or go to a driving school or whatever in your car. You know, I think that'd be pretty awesome.
list cars. And, uh, you know, cars that someone who wanted one would be willing to pay more for it. And uh, you'd be surprised at what's on that list. Uh, the Mazda Miata, the uh, Mini Cooper, of course, the Ford Mustang GT, especially a convertible, uh, the Chevy Camaro, you know, SS, or any of those with a V8, uh, the Dodge Challenger, the Dodge Charger, the Hellcat, of course, uh, the Chevy Corvette, fall into bucket list cars as far as reasonably priced ones then you go up of course you know to your really high end stuff your Porsche your Ferrari Aston Martin McLaren you know all those really expensive cars Lamborghini things like that but I'm not really in a position to be buying that caliber of car but I've been looking at some others you know just to see what's out there of course, the used car market is quite strong right now, which is why I sold my previous cars, just to see how the market would treat them, and treated them quite well, if I do say so. I'm even considering selling some of my motorcycles, because the, the market is strong. So I guess we'll see about that. I would like to hold on to, you know, at least one dirt bike, you know, especially Mr. White. Mr. White's my favorite dirt bike. If you haven't seen through my channel, make sure you look at, look for a YZ250 videos on my channel. Mr. White is the beloved. Had that bike longer than any other dirt bike I've owned. And uh, it's pretty fantastic. 270cc. It now has the uh, Electron 38 millimeter carburetor, which is fantastic. It's a beauty, and we just did a, uh, a 1992 retro uh, plastics and graphics kit on it. So if you haven't seen that, go back a few videos and look for the retro kit we did to Mr. White. Biker Dave. 
because he used to be a bike messenger way back in the early 90s. And that was my nickname, Biker Dave, so it stuck. Look how this thing hugs the curves. Totally. <laughs> totally fun. Anyway, uh, so yeah, check out our other videos. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, feel free to comment down below or anything you see on any video of ours and we try to respond to everything. And uh, that's that. So coming up on the post office now. And uh, hope you all have a good evening. We shall see y'all later.